To answer this and other questions, the DOE teamed up with experts from the U.S.-based Reef Environmental Education Foundation. Reef conducts research with the help of volunteer scientists and divers. Together, the DOE and Reef formed the Grouper Moon Project in 2002. From the offset, the scientists wanted to know how many grouper attend the annual aggregation and if closing the fishery leads to a recovery of the species over time. When you have thousands and thousands of reef fish on a deep reef and you're trying to count the number of fish that are there, it's quite challenging to do. We tackle that problem in a number of different ways. We tag fish on site with small floy tags that are basically little streamers. So it's a small spear that we use and shoot the side of the fish just below the dorsal fin and inject the tag just deep enough to get it to stay without bothering the fish too much. Those fish that we tag move around enough within the spawning aggregation and mix enough with all the other fish. They're distributed randomly among all the other individuals. So we tag a certain proportion of the population. We don't know what proportion that is. We just put out 100 tags. Theoretically, then afterwards, if we count sets of 50 fish and we see one tag on average, and we do many, many counts like that, and it comes out one tag in every 50 fish, we know that 100 tags would probably represent 1 50th of the total population. So we can multiply 100 tags times 50 and get the entire population. That'd be 5,000 fish. Scientists also count fish in videos they record at the site. One year, they even used sonar to estimate fish numbers. And lo and behold, the numbers came out pretty much the same. Another way to determine whether the population of Nassau grouper is recovering is by looking at the sizes of fish at the aggregation site. So we've been going out there every year since 2004 with a special video system that has a pair of lasers on it that are set 25 centimeters apart and they're perfectly parallel. I put the lasers on the side of the fish and then all of a sudden I have a scale on the fish that I can use to measure. Using computer software, scientists can determine the length of the fish based on the known distance between the two laser points. We go out and we try to measure several hundred fish every year and look at changes in length distribution. And what we've seen with that is that in 2004, 2005, and 2006, length distributions were shifting towards larger fish. So the fish were growing in size, but no new young fish were coming in. And then in 2007 and 2008, that length distribution started shifting. And we know, based on the measurements we did, that we still have the same number of big fish. So therefore, we must have a lot more small fish. If we have a lot more small fish, the population is increasing in size. And so we're using that as one way to look at whether or not we're getting more fish into the population. Another key question the scientists needed to answer was where the fish at the aggregation site were coming from. There was lots of theories by the fishermen that the fish that showed up on the spawning sites weren't all from Cayman. They came from other countries, all you know, they came from Jamaica, they came from Cuba, and so the only time that we had to fish them was when they were at the spawning sites. To test this theory, experts put hydrophones around the perimeter of Little Cayman that could receive signals from tagged fish. We basically got acoustic transmitters and we surgically implanted them into the, into the stomach cavity of the fish. What we wanted to do was we wanted to find out the fish that we tagged at the site, are they going back to home reefs around Little Cayman or are they actually leaving and going someplace else? So it turns out that what we were finding was all the fish that were tagged are in fact resident around Little Cayman only. None of the fish actually left. If they're only coming from this island, it means that that aggregation is critical to the local population itself, and it's a time when those fish are most vulnerable. And that's really important information to have when you're trying to convince politicians and decision makers to make decisions that are going to be not universally popular.